Oh, hey everyone, I'm Brandon Bonifer, and today I am just ecstatic to be able to show you guys the S Pen on the Z Fold 3. Over the last few weeks, when I first learned about this S Pen functionality coming to the Z Fold 3, I got excited about a folding phone. Never before did I even think about it. I've been a big Note user and I've been using tablets and I thought to myself, those are the devices. I'm never going to see myself really have a folding phone in my pocket that I can use for writing. And today, guys, I'm ecstatic. I want to share with you how you can use the S Pen for digital note taking and daily planning. So stay with me. All right, so you guys, if we haven't met before, I'm Brandon Bonifer. I'm the creator and founder of the Key to Success Planner, and today I'm gonna to show you our planner on the Z Fold 3. You can use this planner for your daily note-taking, for personal, professional development, and career success, and if you're launching a business or growing an organization, this is a planner for you. Over the last few weeks, I've had the opportunity to watch tons, I mean literally tons of videos showcasing the Z Fold 3. And not a lot of creators took the time, in my opinion, to really dive into what I felt was one of the biggest updates. Bringing the S Pen to the Z Fold lineup, I think is incredible. Now, I've been using the Samsung Note for a few years now, and I'll tell you one thing about this device. It is really good for jotting down a quick note. Maybe you're in a grocery store and you want to pencil something off. But if you're gonna sit down and do some intense note taking or plan your week, the pen isn't big enough to really give you that comfort feeling for hard, long note taking. And the device just, it doesn't feel like a piece of paper when it comes to the orientation. So when I learned about the Z Fold 3 and the comparable size to the iPad mini, I really actually thought to myself, this is something that I can use. I use the iPad mini all the time for on the go note taking. It's something that easily fits in my carry and I can take good digital notes with it, but it lacks the capabilities of a phone, right? And doesn't have a camera and all those extra functions. Plus, you're never gonna put an iPad mini in your pocket. So now to have a tablet-like device that is about that size, that is pretty cool. So today we're gonna to cover a number of things. I'm gonna show you a little bit of information about the form factor, how it fits in your hand, how it feels. I'm gonna show you some real life writing. Now I'm gonna keep in mind, I'm writing and doing all this behind cameras. Cameras are in front of me, cameras are above me. So it may not as feel as polished as you would hope it would. It is way easier if you can remove all those apparatuses and just look at the notes themselves. So we're gonna talk about that form factor. We're gonna talk about some applications that you can use for digital note taking and daily planning. I'm gonna show you some of the tools and functions and then just give you my overall assessment after using this device. I will be doing a deep dive on how to use OneNote and how to use Note Shelf on the Samsung Z Fold 3. So if you guys haven't already, hit the subscribe button, punch that like button, share this video with others. This is an exciting time uh, in digital planning note taking. And for those that are just learning about the S Pen, it's going to be a wild ride. So let's talk about form factor first. So when I first saw this device and I thought about the thickness, yeah, thickness is something I just didn't want you never really want a thick device in your pocket or really anywhere. But as I looked at the device and got it in my hands, it felt solid. And I guess there's something, a trade-off between feeling solid and feeling thick. And feeling solid definitely trumps the thickness of it. And when I compare it to my other devices, I compare it to like my iPhone, for example, you can see here that with the case on, it is, you know, it's definitely thicker, uh, but it's not like, it's not real it's not like crazy thick, I guess is the best way I'll put it. But when you open up the device itself, it definitely has that same feel and thickness that you would expect from a tablet phone. So when I was ordering the device, one of the first accessories I knew I had to get was the S Pen and case holder for a number of reasons. One, I thought, why would you have an S Pen and not be able to carry it with you all the time? It's gonna get lost in your pocket, it's gonna get damaged, so obviously having a holder was something that I was going to need. I've watched a lot of videos from other creators and being able to hide that pen inside the phone, that stylus, to have it with you in the phone so you can eliminate that bulk in the case was something that they weren't excited to see in this case. And I'll be honest, I kind of felt that way at first too. But then when I got the S Pen in my hands and started to feel it for what it was, I felt like a real pen, a real pencil. That stylus in the note just isn't thick enough for my liking to write a decent amount of notes. Then I got the device in my hands and learned that I was able to actually pretty easily remove the pen from the case. You can slide it on and off 
really easy just like that. And it gives you guys an option to take it off, place it on the side of your desk. And I will be frank with you, um, working with this device, being able to have that pencil holder remove is huge because now when you're working on your desk and you're working on a flat surface, you can easily write and you don't have any uh, shake from the actual device itself. The other thing that I also thought was really cool and I wasn't really expected was when I was actually holding the device in my hand, that pen holder acted as a grip for me to be able to hold my device in my hand. And then with the portfolio case not being magnetic, you can see I'm able to put my thumb right here and hold that device pretty securely. And that actually improved my writing experience as I was using it. One of the next things that was a big trigger for me was the folding screen itself. And knowing that it was nearly the same size as the iPad mini really intrigued me. So I look at this device from a mobile standpoint, you can see here, this is the comparison side to my iPhone. And here you can see the Z Fold 3 next to the Samsung Note 20. And when I look at that screen, you can definitely see that there's so much more real estate. It's vertically about the same, but the horizontal spread or what I would consider portrait mode is quite impressive. Now, the other device I really kind of wanted to compare this to, and I don't think it's really a fair comparison, is the Surface Dual. Last year when the Surface Dual came out, I was super excited for this device because it really is a folding device that has two screens, but there was a lot of things about the device that were kind of challenging, but for being the first generation, those things were all very easily overcome. But when it came to looking at this device and comparing it to, I don't think it's fair to really compare it to at the moment due to the fact that we're going to see some type of update from Microsoft, I imagine here in a pretty near future. However, we don't have that right now to compare to. So when you look at these devices side by side, you can see the Surface Dual definitely has a little more space to work with horizontally, vertically, the Fold 3, definitely is a winner there. But the thing that really got me is I can't go like this, like I can with this device. I can literally go across the whole screen. And that to me was huge because so often I'm taking notes, I wanna be able to zoom in, zoom out, and be able to have a little more canvas to work with. The last thing I wanna showcase is when it comes to the form factor of the device is the overall size as a folded device compared to like the iPhone, compared to the Note 20 it definitely fits in the same size factor of a mobile phone. So you have that ability to think about carrying it with you. Again, it's a little thicker, but I don't think that's a big setback uh, for how you're gonna use this device. So let's get into what you guys are here for. Let's talk about actually using the device for digital note-taking. So when it comes to note-taking, there's really a handful of different apps that you can use. You can go on the Google Play Store and find tons of note apps. Uh, Samsung has their own Note apps, but the two that I highly recommend is OneNote and NoteShelf. They seem to be just well thought out and designed. NoteShelf has a little bit more of a booklet style where you can scroll through pages and such. OneNote has more, in my opinion, like a binder style where you can add more pages, you can insert more content into it, you can copy and create things. With NoteShelf, you can also use the hyperlink features. So if you find a PDF planner that has hyperlinks, you can easily jump around and navigate from date to place throughout that system pretty well. When it comes to the actual writing experience, that is going to be unique to this device. And so far, my first impressions, I'm absolutely blown out of the water with it. Uh, it is very smooth, it's very polished. We talk about this screen, and we've seen so many creators talk about the screen and how there is, you can see the line, yes, you can see the line, but is that line a big deal? I don't think it is at all, I mean, I have a a notebook and there's a binder in the middle of it or there's a folding line or a crease from using a book and that doesn't bother us at all. Why would this bother us? But I can actually slide through that line and write through it and it lines up pretty well. A handful of tests that I've done already today, I was able to easily continue writing a sentence right across it. The screen does not feel as weak as everybody's talking about and you can apply a decent amount of pressure on the surface itself and really go ahead with note taking. OneNote is really one of my favorite apps. And the reason for that is you just have so much flexibility when it comes to using it to be able to create tabs, folders, sections. And when you get into actually using a space and you're going ahead and writing it, you can go into draw, you can go into pick your pen, you could change the size of that pen, you could change the color, and then you can easily jump to your notes and you can go ahead and write 
a note. And you can see here, right here's that line, right? So I'm gonna write over top that line. Right here is that fold line. And I'll erase that, but keep your eyes on it so we can. Easy. And then you can easily use the S Pen to go ahead and erase. Some other really cool features about OneNote is I can go ahead and use Stylus. I can select that. I can resize it. I can move it. You can also type in a planner, which I think is awesome. I think that's a big feature. Whenever you can type and have the ability to handwrite, it gives you both dual functions. Another big fan favorite is being able to change orientations uh, in the application. So you can use it in portrait mode. You can rotate it and use it in landscape mode. Pinch and zoom features enable them both. And you can really get to where you need to go very easily. And here I'm just a quick highlight to show you how that's done. One thing I really also like about uh, one note is the ability to search. You guys know I'm from Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, love cheese, and one of my favorite meals is grilled cheese. So I'm going to come in here, type in grilled cheese, and you can see down the left side here, it's searching. And right here, if I click on that, it's taking me, and you can see right here, it highlighted grilled cheese. I can jump to the next one, and you can see right here, it highlighted grilled cheese as that as well. So you can search your handwritten notes, and I think that's where this device and OneNote combined are a powerhouse. So often as I'm taking notes on the go, if I'm in a meeting, I'm in my car, I am in um, just a library, wherever, having coffee and I write a note and I can't remember it, but I can remember what we talked about, being able to search and find those handwritten notes is going to be huge. When it comes to using NoteShelf, which is another one of my favorite apps, is it has more of a booklet feel. I can slide through pages like this, I can use the hyperlink feature and I can click on different navigational sections of the planner. Uh, I can easily get to my data view. I can jump to an actual date. I can use the same in a planner and just take good notes. And that I really like. So when it comes to digital note taking and using this device, I think it's gonna be something that a lot of people in the digital note taking world are really gonna to adapt to. So overall, I am super excited. For the first time, I really feel like I can have a Franklin Covey, Michael Hyatt style paper planner on a mobile device and carry it with me wherever I go. The price point of this device is, it's an investment, that is for sure, but hopefully you can trade in one phone or two phones and find yourself utilizing it. But if you're gonna be in digital planning and you're gonna be taking notes wherever it is your goal, this is a device that's really gonna maximize your productivity. Guys, I'm Brandon Bonin for creator and founder of the Key to Success Planner. If you guys are interested or haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We're going to do another video showing you more information on OneNote, more information on NoteShelf, and really talk about the benefits of digital planning. Go ahead, check out the link in the description. If you guys want to try this planner for free, type in YouTube 2022 and you can get yourself a free demo of this planner and you can see all the bells and whistles from daily planning, weekly planning to looking at your goals, your vision. Uh, board, talking about your professional development and really stretching yourself and maximizing your productivity so that you can enjoy more of life uh, when you're with your friends and family. Guys, thank you for following me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one real soon.